Hey everyone, it's your girl Tara Michelle. Welcome to or welcome back to my channel, Opinionated Scents, our safe space to discuss all things fragrance, whether we like them or not. Today's video is super exciting for me because I've been sitting on this secret and it's all about the House of Dossier. They have actually stepped outside of the inspiration realm and created three original fragrances from their house. That is right, they are original creations from the brilliant minds over there at the House of Dossier. So I have the package here. We're gonna go ahead and open it up, do a little unboxing like you guys love to do. And I am going to do a first impression of these three fragrances. Now, by the time you're watching this, the full review will also be attached. I'm gonna film this part today, experience the fragrances for myself, and then after I've had a chance to wear them all, I'll come back with full reviews and you guys will get them all in one video. So. If you're ready to hear all about the new three original creations from the House of Dossier, let's go ahead and jump right into the video. So I'm going to go ahead and on this cute little like pink tissue paper here. Make sure my address ain't nowhere else. Okay. <laughs> okay. So here is the packaging. Different color um, all the way around than the original. It says Dossier Originals. Look at this. They provide me with my own little strip sticky thing. Oh, there's two of them. Oh, you love me. And I had my own ready. Ooh, nice quality paper. I ain't fancy. Oh, it's called the Genderless Collection. Super dope. Okay, so this is the card. And then on the back, like always, they're gonna give you, don't look at my nails, y'all, I need to get my nails done. My nails are terrible, they're always terrible. You guys be used to at this point. Um, Dossier Originals Unique Blends Happy Sniffing. Yes, I'm so excited. This one is called Fiery Leather and Rhubarb. Now, that scares me, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> um, I do like leather when it's feminine, okay? This clearly states the genderless collection though. So with this being the genderless collection, I don't really, you know, what does that mean? But here it says, fiery leather and rhubarb is an unconventional medley of raw materials, florals, vegan black leather accord, and rhubarb. This bold scent builds off each ingredient to deliver a balance of masculine leather and feminine florals with vegetal notes of rhubarb. Okay, well, it's a vegetable. So yeah, I don't think I've ever seen the word vegetal in my life and I have a master's degree in creative writing and English literature. So yeah, top notes, rhubarb, nutmeg, melon, Middle notes, geranium, rose, and saffron. Base notes, vegan black leather and vetiver. Mm. The olfactive families are ambery and green. So let's go ahead and test this out without further ado. Of course, we all know what the packaging looks like. That minimalistic, beautiful, sleek design. Freaking love it. Let's check the top. Yep, definitely magnetic. Oh, here for it. Now let's spray. Move this box. Check the atomizer. Nice little punch to it, okay. Nice misting. Okay. It is definitely green in the opening. Ooh, that is so green. Um, I pick up on a little spiciness. I pick up on a ton of green if you like green like garden smelling fragrances this is going to be a complete vibe for you there's that leather this smells like cucumber like during the pickling process not already a pickle yet but on its way that sour saltiness to it and there's no salt in here Mm, that's interesting. That's that melon. That's what that is. That's that melon. Mm. Okay, so 
Yeah, that's very interesting. I definitely get a vibe of new car seats and leather for sure. Wow. That comes across very realistic with the leather and it just feels very spicy to me. I know in here it says vetiver, but I'm telling you it smells like black pepper to me, but that's that leather. Okay, so could this be unisex? Sure. And I know a lot of people are trying to move to this whole genderless thing. This pulls very masculine to me. This is a nice spring, summer, maybe fall, sexy leather fragrance. It has a little bit of kick with the vetiver in there. It is just so, like, it's not new car smell, but it's definitely new leather seats. It's new leather pants. It's, I'm riding my Harley. I'm riding my hog. And I just feel like this is 100% masculine. I personally would not wear this, but I would envision like Vin Diesel wearing this from Fast and the Furious, maybe even The Rock, Jason Statham, all those men who love those beautiful cars with those leather seats and you just know that they can kick some serious butt. Like that is the vibe I'm getting from this. And it is projecting, like it is all over my room. I mean, it is, and it's such a huge punch of greenness. I'm so shocked. And if they're calling it the, if they're saying that it's the rhubarb that's doing that, this is definitely a different note than what we're used to from Delina. This is a garden. This is definitely um, that like juiciness from the melon. And it is some serious, serious leather. And it's a vibe. I'm not mad at it. I'd say whoever is the nose behind that is a very fun, adventurous person who likes to take risks. And you notice we love here in the fragrance community. We don't want fragrances that are boring and that smell like everything else. I've never smelled anything that smells like this. I also don't have a lot of experience with leather. My biggest leather experience would be Donna from Valentino, and that is a more powdery, soft feminine. This is definitely an in your face. I can actually think of three men in my life currently that I want to try this out. I want them to test this and I want to smell it on them. So again, from the House of Dossier, we have Fiery Leather and Rhubarb. Let's move on to the second box. More sticks for me. I already have that other one left. The Genderless Collection again. Ooh. Comes in the same type of packaging as the first one, you guys. This one is called Caramelized Lavender and Hazelnut. You know what? This sounds really, really intriguing. And I, you know, I like to say the best for last. So let me look at what this other one is before. Another two sticks. They love me. Sunny Vetiver and Neroli. Let's go ahead and do this one so I can save the really sweet and possibly sweet decadent one for the end. Okay, again, packaging is very minimalistic, very sleek, very gorgeous. Okay, so Sunny Vetiver and Neroli. Top notes are bergamot, grapefruit, and Neroli. I'm all in. Sign me up. Middle notes are orange blossom, geranium, and elimi. E-L-E-M-I. So never seen or heard of that before. Must look that up. And the base notes are Haitian vetiver, patchouli, and cedarwood. So this really seriously is about bringing the genders together, not separating anything, making it too masculine or feminine. So it says sunny vetiver and neroli features a blend of floral and woody notes. The fragrance merges feminine notes of neroli and orange flowers with masculine smoky woodiness of Haitian vetiver patchouli and cedarwood resulting in a harmonious intertwining okay so and i need to focus on what i'm reading instead of looking all over the card um there's a, a message down here at the bottom that basically says thanks for shopping at dossier or whatever um but for me i'm really interested in how this will lean my fear um, with dealing with genderless fragrances is that they always tend to lean masculine to me. Here's the thing. I think like when you look at someone like um, Jeremy Fragrance, okay, I think he has like the most viewers, followers in the perfume fragcom thing, I think. I don't really follow a bunch of huge, huge people. I like 
people who remind me of me, who are more realistic, who I don't think are being bought and paid to say things. I just, you know, so the smaller YouTubers work for me. But I think that for some odd reason, people think that men dominate the fragrance world. And so if you're coming out with a genderless collection, my fear would be that you would err on the side of caution with leaning more masculine than more feminine. I don't really like unisex fragrances and I definitely do not like masculine fragrances. So I'm nervous, um, but I trust Dossier so far. They have not let me down ever yet. So we're going to see. And I do believe about, you know, um, the importance of inclusivity and keep and keeping, you know, everybody involved and together. So I do like the idea ooh, of having a genderless collection. I just hope that they don't have the fear of leaning a little more feminine than masculine. Okay. Right off the bat again, this is very masculine to me. I pick up so much cedar wood and patchouli and vetiver. And there's some, that must be this Alimi. I've never smelled whatever this is I'm picking up before. I know all these other notes. And the geranium is very loud too. And this is a, this is a really good fall for spring, summer, and fall again, fragrance. Cause I'm, I'm in the Midwest and for real, all those three seasons tend to like really just collide together. This isn't about the citruses at the forefront. The citruses are playing in the background. They are present and it's almost like shining the house lights on the person um, on stage. So the citrus is there, but baby, this is all about the spicy woodiness of this. This again is a masculine fragrance to me. I would never wear this fragrance, but immediately one man in my life calls to mind. He's a mechanic. This to me just reminds me of what a man would smell like, you know, fresh up out the shower, got all that good stuff from under his nails, but he still likes smelling like a hardworking man. I'm not talking about B.O. You women, you know what I'm talking about. That man that when you smell him, you know, it just... He's clean and, you know, a little spicy. He's mysterious, very sexy. That type of vibe, that's what I'm getting from this. But it is 100% masculine to me. Last but not least, we're going to be talking about caramelized lavender and hazelnut. So... <laughs> The card says caramelized lavender and hazelnut takes lavender, a staple in men's fragrances. Really? Is it really? Hmm. It's also in women's fragrances. And reimagines it with a salted caramelized hazelnut accord. Gourmand tones are more commonly used in women's fragrances. Combining the aromatic lavender and sweet hazelnut, the effect is hypnotizing it sounds like it so the top notes are salted caramelized hazelnut accord well that is the top note middle notes lavender violet orange flower so it's gonna be some powderiness maybe from the violet and then base notes are patchouli vetiver suede and ambroxan baby you have me at Woo, kiwi. so I'm, I'm super excited. Look, I dropped the stick. Come on now. I'm super excited because I love a good gourmand. We are heading into fall. Come through. Please come through. Atomizers are great. Yep. First whiff of that. Just, just moving that around, y'all. Mm-hmm. Yes. Now, the hazelnut is coming through. This smells like um, the like, who's, it's, I was going to say Toll House. It's not Toll House. It's like Nestle, somebody, or somebody's doing something, some kind of house doing something with the vanilla or the hazelnut little coffees. They come in like a little square or rectangle, uh, tin and you can, you know, just add like teaspoons of them to hot water and make your coffee. They got like some Vienna something. And that's the kind of hazelnut that I was getting that hazelnut coffee. It's, it's not, a coffee note is specifically the hazelnut, but that's what it reminded me of. Mm. 
the lavender is very, very potent too. So this is not as sweet as I wanted it to be. When you move into, I know it's the patchouli, the vetiver, the suede, um, and the heavy, heavy, like this salted caramelized hazelnut makes a very pungent, potent smell. This also pulls masculine to me. Not gonna lie, I'm a little sad because I don't wear masculine fragrances. I don't wear masculine leaning fragrances and nothing about this says super gourmand to me at the moment. You know, for me, I'm, I'm guessing the genderless collection is pretty much really for men. It's masculine according to my nose and my likes. If they come out with a volume two of this, I really, really hope they're all leaning feminine. Um, we're just that little something that keeps it from going too far. You know, that's the danger for me in moving into something that's supposed to be genderless. I know I want to be all inclusive, but for me, you can be inclusive by making something that really traditionally fits the needs of or the, the norm of masculine and something that fits the norm of feminine and then do one that can be unisex and people can choose what they want. The women can like the, the so-called masculine version and the men can also like the feminine version. Just give us options. Cause for me right now, I'm feeling like everything is masculine dominant and therefore none of these would work for me. I wouldn't mind them on um, a man. I think they would work very good with the body chemistry of a man because that's what they make me feel like. I, I feel like I want to be wrapped in the arms of a man when I'm smelling these, um, but not necessarily wearing this myself. Absolutely not wearing this myself. So those are my first impressions of those three fragrances. Again, you're going to talk about quality, creativity, potency. I feel like longevity will be there as well because they're using the perfect, perfect base notes for that to be the outcome. And that's what we always want. We want those fragrances that are going to stay with us all day so that we don't necessarily have to top up. We can if we want to, but that is not a necessity. So far, I am very pleased with the quality of the product. And I'll come back and give you a full review at a later date. Because for me, I'm definitely going to be trying these on male family members and friends, not myself. Hey everyone, so I'm back to give you a follow-up after I have worn all three of these fragrances on my own and I've also tested them on some friends of mine. Luckily for me, I will be able to give these away to my male friends because out of the two of them, one of them loves two of them and the other one loves the other one. So it's going to work out perfectly. But let's go ahead and get into caramelized lavender and hazelnut. This one turned out to be my favorite in the dry down. The sweetness came in, still very masculine, but it just was so pleasant. Um, the caramelized lavender and hazelnut lasted on my skin for about a good six hours. Definitely the longest lasting one, surprisingly. I didn't expect that out of um, these three. And then on my skin, I still smelled them a week later after I was going to do the laundry and it was still on the shirt that I was on. So, Again, very masculine, but the dry down is amazing. That that um, caramelized hazelnut, sweet, you know, the lavender really like dialed it back a bit. It wasn't as in your face. I, I, I really enjoyed the dry down. The fiery leather and rhubarb lasted the least amount, surprisingly. So on my clothes, I still smelled it up until the four hour mark and then I topped up and um, you get that big old burst of energy. It's still something that is super masculine to me and that I would never wear, but I'm just surprised that this one didn't last longer. However, there are so many designer fragrances I heard that last two or three hours. So if you're going to get four hours out of something, I think that's okay, especially with the price point on this. The projection is huge when you're first wearing it for like the first two hours. So I don't have a problem with something that's $29 um, lasting me four hours of me being able to top up. So if you're a gentleman and you like this one, it's a vibe. And last but not least, we have Sunny Vetiver and Neroli. This one really dried down to nothing but vetiver on my skin. I love the note of vetiver, but having that, the citrus, um, bright, energetic side just completely dissipate and I be left with just the vetiver wasn't a vibe for me as a female. However, there are other designer fragrances that do that um, in men's fragrances. And I don't mind 
I don't mind my man smelling like vetiver. So uh, this one here was about the four hour mark for me as well with regard to being able to smell something other than the vetiver. As far as the dry down, eight hours later, still on my skin, but again, just vetiver. So I do like these fragrances for what they are, which is a first attempt at doing a unisex line, which absolutely turned out to be a masculine line to me. I don't have a problem with these fragrances on any man. I think that's exactly who they speak to me personally. And for longevity and projection, for the price point, you can't beat that. You just can't beat that. So if you're interested, I'll be back with more information about these three fragrances. That is it for my first impressions and then follow up review for these three fragrances, these new original creations from the House of Dossier. Fellas, get your nose on these. You know, with the amazing return policies, nothing for you to buy them. And if they aren't your vibe, you can gift them to someone or you can return them. I think that you'll like them and I think that they really give you a lot of quality, especially for the price point. I mean, it's just, it is what it is. So thanks for spending this time with me today. Thank you, Dossier, for sending me these three amazing first attempts at original creations. Even though they lean very masculine, I'm not mad at it. I'm very happy for you guys. As always, I want to talk to you guys in the comments. So tell me if you're curious about these fragrances or if you yourself have gotten your nose on them and what you think about them. Until then, guys. Bye.